Good morning, good morning, good morning. It's Kate Bolt, Independent Stampin' Up! Demonstrator here in the UK and I'm back for another Fun Friday Live. Good morning if you're joining me live. Welcome. I'm just setting up. It's Friday! I don't know if anybody else is as excited as I am that it's the end of the week, but I am quite excited because, of course, it's a bank holiday here in the UK. It's our early May bank holiday on Monday. So it's a three-day weekend for those of us with people who are at working office hours in the family and for our children who are at school and all of those things. Right, I'm just checking out my um, laptop next to me, make sure I'm live in the right place, doing the right thing. And I'm just going to wait a few minutes and see if anybody hops on live with me today. That would be amazing. So if you're watching me live or if you hop on, do say hello. Tell me where you're watching from and how you are. I would love to know. I would. Good morning, Louise. How are you this fine day? I hope you're well. I really hope you're well. Okay. So, so, so I've got some beautiful paper. Um, today, I'm making a card that you can use up your scraps with. And I can't remember the name of this paper. I think it was called Country Floral Lane. And it was in... The current, I would say it's in the current January to April catalogue, which is about, and it's about to retire next week. By the 2nd of May, this beautiful paper will be gone. I've just got a little bit of this one left. And I'm going to use it up this morning. And I'm going to show you a card and how to use up your scraps. So, how are you, Louise? Are you well today? I'm grabbing my drink. It's better. Morning, Shaz. How are you? I'm all right. I've got hay fever, my love. But apart from that, I'm all right. I hope you are okay. I hope you're well. I'm going to make a card to show you how to use your scraps up. So I made this card at our class last night um, with my beautiful, lovely class ladies. We had such a great time making this card. And I'm super excited to share it with you here. Uh, oh, Hilary, how lovely of you. You're very welcome, my lovely. So lovely to have you on my live. I hope you're okay. I hope you're well. Yeah, Shaz, it is the dreaded tree pollen. You're absolutely right. Um, honestly, it's one of those years for the high pollen count. So, yeah, but never mind. I think it's going down. Alexa tells me today that the pollen tree pollen is decreasing. I have no idea, <laughs> but we can only hope. All right, so Louise, thank you for watching. You will have made this card with me at class already, um, but I hope you enjoy it with a different paper. Uh, yeah, it's a couple of different papers. So I thought I'd use this Country Floral Lane DSP. It is still current in the catalogue, but it is just about to retire. Uh, did I have a lovely brunch with Liz last Friday? I did. Thank you, Shaz. You do have all the insider information, don't you? <laughs> yes, Liz and I had such a lovely time. In fact, I'll let you into a secret. It's not a secret at all. Um, don't know why I said that, but I had lunch with two lovely Liz's. So I was very lucky to have lunch with my friend Liz Yule. And our demonstrator development um, manager, Liz Hockley, came along and with her beautiful little girl, Isabel. And we had such a lovely brunch. It was so nice. I wish you lived closer to Shaz. It would be fun. Right. Don't look at my trimmer. It's filthy. In fact, look at all the glue on there. That is my next job. It's grim. It's grim. Okay. So I have decided to use this beautiful paper and it's got balmy blue in it. It's got one of last year's current in colours, which is Sweet Sorbet, which I've picked out for my card base. Um, so I picked that out and I'll show you what I've prepped already. So I've got my scrap of card. I've got my card base, which is in Sweet Sorbet. I've made an insert for it already in my regular C6 card size. Here we go. I've made a layer of balmy blue because that's the other colour in the paper. There's petal pink and there's a green in there too, but I'm going to go with the balmy blue. And then I have made a white layer to go on top. 
And we're going to make a pinwheel card. I don't know if you've ever made one of these before. I was searching for something new to do, some inspiration with my class ladies, and I came across this. Oh, my word. I don't think I've stopped making them. <laughs> um, I will apologise because my YouTube stream on my laptop has quite a long lag on it. It must have about half a minute. So if I don't respond or if I, it seems a bit out of sync, that might be why. If I don't respond at the right time. So I've got my card base. I've got my Barbie blue layer and I've got a white layer. So if you want to know the measurements, I can tell you what they are. So my card base is A4. I've scored it in half at 14.8 and cut it in half at 10.5 centimetres. I have then got a blue one, which is half a centimetre smaller, which is 10 by 14.3. And then my front middle one, which is this one, is just slightly smaller again. So just to leave a little half centimetre border, it's 9.5 by 13.8 in centimetres. And this one is the same size as my first layer, which is 10 by 14.3. But all my layers are always the same. Oh, am I, Shaz? Thank you for letting me know. Maybe it's just a video that's coming through on my <coughs> on my laptop. Thank you for letting me know that I'm responding appropriately. Right. So making a pinwheel card, it looked so difficult and yet it's so easy. Helen, good morning. Helen was also at my class last night and we had so much fun making these cards and we're going to have another go now. So I did look around at YouTube to have a look to see how to make these cards. I did not design a pinwheel card. This, this is an idea that's been out there a long time and there's a lot of people out there making them. But I found one lady who was amazing and gave me a gave a great tip and I'll share it with you. And then I will, obviously, when I have uploaded this video afterwards, I will make sure I link hers in the description box. Her name is Karen Titus and I watched her way of doing it and I thought this was great. So, yeah, we love these cards, didn't we, Helen? And I think we're all on a bit of a roll of making a ton of them. So what you need to do is decide on what color your base of your pinwheel is going to be and I actually did mine the same colour as my card base, which is Sweet Sorbet. And I've got two pieces of cardstock and they measure seven and a half by seven and a half centimetres. No, they don't. I'm lying. They measure seven centimetres square. Don't know why I told you that. Seven centimetres square. Now, this is a really useful tip. You don't have to do this. I just found it was very useful. If you have a piece of grid paper and line it up, or graph paper or something like that. So you've got your points of your square in the middle. So you've got them lined up with a thick, dark lines like that. Okay. And then I'm going to put a little bit of tape on the back of mine. You can use whatever glue you like. And then I'm going to line it up so that it's symmetrical. You'll find that when you make your cards, and you place them on there, all your points will measure the right and it'll look right. Now, Karen in her video, which was really good, um, explained why. And she showed us a card that she just done by eye, which is absolutely fabulous and wouldn't have bothered me, to be fair. Um, but once she'd pointed out that the points were slightly all off, I couldn't stop looking at it. And that's what had bothered her. So if you get that and you measure it like that on something like that with a point, and then get a pencil. You can either get a ruler or you can draw around it. And then when you come back to do it next time, you don't have to kind of fanny around with, <laughs> fiddle faddle around with um, measuring it. You've just got it in the right place and you can stick your two squares together and know that they'll be lined up. Or you can just do it by eye like I would have done and actually not worry too much. Okay, so that's my template, and I would keep that now and use that again. So that is Karen Titus's tip, and I thought it was great. So then you need eight little squares. So this is where your scraps of designer series paper come in handy. So you can see the piece that I had here, and I just cut a couple of strips off the side, hardly need anything, and I cut eight. Now, when I watched um, somebody else's video, so these were seven, they had their squares at 3.5 centimetres square. 
I've cut mine down to 3.4 centimetre square and I found that fitting it together is so much easier when you take shave that tiny bit off. And I'll show you why in a minute. So you've got eight pieces and we're going to use both sides. Okay, so this is the fun bit. Are you ready? Are you ready? <laughs> Helen, I'm glad you loved these cards last night. We did have fun making them. We could make some more. <laughs> so a tip, we're going to start sticking our squares onto the card here like so. When you stick your very first one down, you just want glue on one side, on the right side of it and not to the left. But that's the only square you do that with. The rest you stick it down as normal. So I'm going to use a bit of my seal. I've got glue everywhere now, look. Doesn't that annoy us? Right. Okay. And I'll show you the reason why I only put it on one side. So I'm going to stick that up here. And I'm leaving a tiny border so I can see my sweet sorbet cardstock. And it makes a nice border. Um, yeah, so thinking about that. That's probably where the millimetre comes from. Because if this is seven by seven and these are three and a half and you leave a little border, it was all getting too tight in the middle. So I've made mine 3.4 centimetres square and I have eight of them. And all you do then is work your way around. And I'll show you, it's so effective. So just pop them over the top like this. Keep alternating with the with the designer series paper um do, if it's directional do not worry too much because it can look a bit contrived you just yeah just pop it on and if it's a bit random i think it looks better and you end up with a windmill effect you know like i don't know what it's like in the states but in the uk when you're a kid and you have a little windmill you know, the little ones that you give to your children, they sit in the push chair and hold in the wind or you get at the beach. It looks like one of those. I like it a lot. And these colours are great. So has anybody got any plans for the weekend? We've got a bank holiday weekend, guys. So nice. Shaz, are you farming? Have you still is lambing season still going on? Right. This one on. And then a blue one. The light is not as good as I thought it was this morning in here, but not to worry. Uh, let's put that one there and then you'll see why I've left this one not properly stuck down so we only stuck it on one side because we're going to tuck our other piece right in underneath here that's going to be the idea let's hope it works yeah <laughs> yes and that is because I left that tiny like millimeter Gap, I think because otherwise it can get very tight tucking that in down in the middle and you end up with it a bit puckered there we go so there's our pinwheel that's so sweet and then you can actually go back in with your glue put a little bit there and make sure that's stuck down that's the fun bit now we're gonna make our card look how pretty it is <laughs> I love these colours. I'm so excited. Um, and it was just deciding then what uh, sentiment I'm going to use and um, what colour I'm going to stamp it in now. So I've pulled out the Charming Sentiment stamp set. This is a great one to have in your stash. I love it. And there's a couple of reasons why. It's got some really useful sentiments for loads and loads of different occasions, like thank you and happiest birthday and congratulations, even baby ones good luck, what's new, you know, woohoo, all sorts. And I like to fussy cut out my sentiments sometimes, but not everybody does. So there's a matching die set called the Sentiment Silhouette Dies. And before it retires, oh, actually, I think it's, this one might be carrying over into the new catalogue, but it is currently 
before it harries over a bundle. So if you buy them together, you get 10% off, which is a bargain because you can save some money. But the all of these dies cut out all of these sentiments. But you also get little hearts and stars and birthday candles and little flowers. This is like a ripped notepad edge, loads of things. The only problem I have with it is matching up the dies to what I want. This one's not too bad because I'm going to use the birthday one because it's a very special friend's birthday today. So I'm going to stamp it in the sweet sorbet. I'm going to try. Happiest of birthdays to you. Now I would suggest stamping your card before you assemble it because if you assemble it and you put it all on and then you stamp it and it all goes wrong you've gone to a lot of effort and you can't recover it up okay well you could try I'm sure okay so I've got my sweet sorbet and this is quite a um, juicy one or it was I haven't used it for a while let's just give it a go Oh, it's lovely. Such a nice colour. Okay, so I'm going to do it sort of down here in the middle. Wishing you the happiest of birthdays. How nice is that? I like the font as well. Okay, so we've got that on there. Now I can put this together. So I think I'm going to put my adhesive on the back. Pop it in. So these cards are fantastic for using up all your little scraps of card uh, paper. I don't know about you, but I have a lot of them. And I'm just um, looking at my retiring designer series paper, of which I don't have a huge amount. I'm so pleased because I've managed to use lots of it this time um, but I do have lots of little bits and this is one of those ones that would use up loads of that which is always useful isn't it what what do you guys do with all your little tiny bits do tell me I don't know where the dog is today he's not in my craft room normally he's everywhere I am so he's having a break somewhere <laughs> oh shut <coughs> excuse me Shaz says you're always farming lambing is over you're just a lot of work you now moving the sheep to grass etc yeah I'll bet it's always always um busy I'm deciding which way up my pinwheel's gonna go I like that one but I quite like that I think I'm gonna go like that it feels right so let's put some of these dimensional foam pads on you do not have to stick it up in the air. When we made this at class, some of the ladies stuck them flat and some of them popped them up. And to be fair, they looked amazing both ways. In fact, the flat ones I thought looked quite neat. I might have to make a flat one. Right. There we go. Just deciding. Is it this way? I think it's this way. And just by eye, pop it in the middle. How cool is that? Wishing you the happiest of birthdays. I love it. So, my piece in the middle, which has gone AWOL here. I'm going to put the same sentiments inside. Just the happy birthday one. Let's move that before I end up dropping an ink pad on it, which is... You know what's going to happen. <laughs> Honestly. I'm going to be red as well by the end of this. You know that, don't you? Ha, ha, ha. Okay. So what is the weather doing wherever you are? Can you all let me know? It's So Alexa told me this morning that we were going to get sunny intervals, but it hasn't really stopped raining properly here yet. It's just miserable looking. And they also told me it was going to get to 17 degrees. I'm not confident. I think she's telling me porkies. <laughs> so I've got my happy birthday in. I'm grabbing back this piece, this odd piece that I've got left. And I'm going to cut a strip off the bottom. 
I'm going to cut three centimeters off. I'm going to cut it in half and have them at one and a half each. And I want to stick those in the inside of my card. And then I'm going to use a bit more of that paper as well. Two little strips. So I could have it this way. Oh, I need to make it slightly shorter or I could have it this way and I think I'm going to go for the blue and this is a 10 centimeter narrow piece so I need it at 10. Here we go. Has anyone got any bank holiday weekend plans as well? I'm just happy to stop. <laughs> right, just pop that on. So just add some DSP inside your card. All these little scraps can be used. I've got plenty of this left. I've got more sheets of this, but I wanted to use the small pieces. So that, um, that could even just make a card front, that one. There we go, so that's going there, and now it's gonna go inside my car, in my card. Oh, Shaz, hopefully chilling out and catching up with jobs. Yeah, me too. Do you know I've got some crochet on the go? I like to do crochet um, in the evenings. I like to keep my hands busy watching a bit of mindless TV, and uh, I'm making my son a blanket, so I need to crack on with it and I really love doing it so I'm going to do some of that uh, and I've got some wool some to start another one as well so I might actually start the other one and have them both on the go because that was the idea how pretty is that wishing you the happiest of birthdays now there is one thing missing I've got a few of my champagne rhinestones left so I'm gonna grab a that massive one there, pop it in the middle. Like the middle of the pinwheel. How cute is that? I love it. So this is going to my special friend today. Oh, I'm happy. I've made the card. So I hope you love it. I'm going to make one more. And I hope you like this technique. Just need to clean that stamp because... I just stamped in that bright red, didn't I? And you know what? Photopolymer stamps do stain, don't they? We don't really mind, but if you clean it off, at least it's not so bad. What a horrible sound it makes, though, on the video. <laughs> oh, dear. Right, now, so I've got this. This is the... I thought we'd have a play with this. Um, this is literally left. Oh, Harry says sunny intervals of temperature of 60 to 17. Thanks, Helen. Harry's a guy who does the Chilton weather alerts in Buckinghamshire. Um, and he's always spot on. So actually, thanks, Harry, because that means the sun will come out later. This was the Tea Boutique 6x6 designer series paper. And this is literally all I've got left of it. So I've got ones with teacups. All I've got, but look at all these... I mean, there's some bigger chunks, but look at all these scraps. So this kind of technique is absolutely perfect for this. But all you need then is a strip that you can get eight pieces of um, little squares out of. And just beautiful. Now you can, you could, let's show you, look. Um, I could use this one and use the other side. So I did it like this one. So I'm showing both sides of the paper. Or I could kind of mix and match four of each. It wouldn't really matter. Now the hard thing is I've just got to decide. So if I look at the colours on the back, it tells me I have got crumb cake, crushed curry, fresh freesia, uh, garden green, orchid oasis, parakeet party, petal pink, starry sky, Sweet Sorbet and Tahitian Tide. So a lot of those are the 2022 to 2024 in colours. 
Right. Let's have a look. So, is there anything with Parakeet Party? I love that green. It's quite full on. Got little teacups. I'm not sure if the teacups will show, or you could, I'm not sure if you'll be able to tell what the teacups are, if you know what I mean, if I cut them into those small squares. But I like it. Um, right, let's have a look then. I think, let's pull these away. And have a look. I'm thinking these. And then these. Well, we'll give it a go and see what we can make from it, shall we? Right. I'm going to bring in my trimmer and I'm going to cut the strips. So we, we need them 3.4 centimetres. And we need eight. Was that 3.4? I think it was. There we go. Two. That's not. <laughs> that's not 3.4. I was doing this last night. <coughs> and I'm using my excuse for my antihistamine meds. <coughs> that I can't cut a square currently. So I do apologise. That's not three. That's 3.4. Okay, that's a square, supposedly. Yes. Let's cut it here. Right. So what, two? Three, Ooh. four, and make sure they are right. That's not a square. This is a scrap. One, two, three, four, and then the other four I'm going to do in this one. <coughs> do excuse me. Am I doing 2.4 or 3.4? 3.4. 3.4. One. Two. <laughs> Three. Four. Oh, didn't even cut that. How funny. Okay, let's check that they're all the right size. One, two, three. Oh, one, two, three, four. Oh, I've got five of those. <coughs> Excuse me. Right, I've got five of those and three of those. What's going on? One, two, three, four. Yes. One, two, three. Count with Kate. <laughs> oh, I'm making myself laugh. I'm sorry. Okay, four. So we've got the pieces that we need. Okay, good. Now, I've already got my card base, but that's all. I, that's as far as I've got. So I'm going for the same colour. 
Um, or I could actually go for parakeet, which is rather nice. <coughs> this is really... <coughs> Excuse me, I'll grab a drink. It's this really zingy colour. I might go for that. <coughs> and then cut a base from the sweet sorbet, uh, a layer, I think. And then I'll grab some white on the top. Such pretty, pretty paper. So, yeah, just really use what scraps you've got. See if you can match it up with your cardstock. Right, bringing in my trimmer now. I'm going to make a base. So, scoring it along here, I'm going to make a tent fold. So, score it at 14.8 and cut at 10.5. And you end up with two if you do it like that. So, you've got one for later and one for now. I'm going to use this one for my layer. So I want it 14.3 by 10. And I love when you get the designer series papers um, and they have a lot of the new in colours in. Um, you can also buy an assorted pack of in colours, which is what I did when these came out last year. And it's a really good way of getting all the colours without having to buy individual packs of them all. Here's a white to go on the top. So that needs to be uh, 9.5 by 13.8. So all I'm doing is going down by half a centimetre. Keep all my little scraps. And then inside, I need my inside panel. So that's going to have to be 14 Point three, which is there by ten. Let's do it that way. I had a dog ear. Okay, good. So there's all the layers, and then the last thing that I need is I'm going to go for the parakeet um, base for my pinwheel. Let's grab a piece of my card and it needs to be seven by seven. So seven by seven. And I need two, don't I? So you can see in a second um, how useful it was to make that template. Has anyone else got hay fever this year or is it just me? Oh, Shaz, did you say you're guilty of buying this set and not using it? The teacups. I did use it for a class when it first came out. I did a really, oh, I loved the class. Um, but I did, I did use the note cards and envelopes that we could get with it too, which really made it a very easy class and really satisfying to make. So I'm going to use my template now to line up my my um, squares because I don't need to like make sure that they're all equal I can just pop them on my pencil line and just go for it and now I know that try the the points are opposite each other equally and all of that jazz okay and then we're going to go for this bit so the hardest bit really is cutting up your paper <laughs> so remember on your very first piece just put adhesive down the right hand side, kind of top right. So on the right side, and then when you put it on, it's going to be on this top right corner. Leave that tiny gap so you can see the pretty cardstock, and then we start layering. But it's a gorgeous set, this um this teacup set. You could make little I always thought you could make little afternoon tea invitations with it or something. I lent mine to a friend. I don't lend out my um, stamps a lot, but yeah, close to friend I lend it to. <coughs> Excuse me.
Right. I think I'm blue. I think I've run out of glue. Have I got my refill? Oh, I'm doing the wrong side on that. It's because I was using both sides on the other one. I'm going to go for Tombow because my refill's in a drawer. And that would just be a whole load of faff, wouldn't it? Pulling that out. Right. While you're on a live, rummaging through the drawer is probably not a best plan. Mm. Maybe this one would have been better with the red <coughs> <coughs> contrast because it kind of does blend in together unless you see it up close. On the camera, it's less defined than it is in real life, but it's still pretty. Yeah, it's still very pretty. So we're going to carry on and go with it. See, if you'd have put the pink in, it would have really... Um, popped is the word. But in a minute, I'm going to show you all the other ones I've already made with this technique. And I've used some of our brand new papers that are coming. What have I done here? Didn't look right, did it? It is right. I think it's because the papers are so similar. <laughs> there we are, but it was right. As I say, don't overthink which direction your patterns go in because you can really overthink it. So this one here is where it gets tucked in. See, so if we'd had that as the contrast, I think that would have been better. So just think about that. When you choose your papers, make sure they contrast well. There's our pinwheel, which is very sweet, very nice. And I think I'm going to use a different stamp, but I'm going to use the, mm, what colour ink am I going for? I think I'm going to go for the parakeet. Let me see. Parakeet party. I haven't used it in ages. It's lovely. We have got, you may have noticed, in our brand new colours that are coming, uh, we've got a returning, we've got a few returning in colours, but we've got the returning lemon lime twist, which is absolutely beautiful. And uh, one of my favourite ones from the in colours. And I was so delighted to see it come back. So lemon lime twist is kind of a bit like Parakeet Party in that it's a nice zingy, yellowy green. Right. Oh, I wasn't gonna use this stamp. I think I'll go for a thank you. If I can lay my hands on the stamp set, I just put it down somewhere. <laughs> it's underneath all of the cardstock. Right, here we go. Here we go. So, um, I'm not using the dies today, but you could definitely use the dies and make it pop up. Let's just check this stamp out. So, if you're worried about where your sentiment's going, pop your um, windmill on your pinwheel, and then you can easily kind of line up where the gaps are. I love the zinginess of that. But they are quite different 
so this is lemon lime twist and this is pa parakeet party even though they look very similar and of course parakeet party is an in color that will is 2022 to 2024 so we'll go away next year but we'll keep this one so that's probably why we've got two zingy greens right i think i'm going to stick this one flat because the last one i popped up and i really like the kind of neat neatness of having a flat one just to decide i think it's going to go this way I need a tiny bit of glue under that first original piece that we left popped up. There we go. And then we can stick it down. How cool is this? I love it. Oh, morning, Margaret. How are you? I hope you're well, my lovely. Did I see on Facebook you'd been out and about or you'd been away? I can't quite remember, but I remember there being some lovely photos. Anyway, so I'm going to pop this one on. There we are. Make sure it's stuck down. I'm going to bring in those lovely champagne rhinestones and I'm going to pop one. Look, this I use these constantly. And I'm going to pop one right in the middle there. Like that. You could pop a few on there, couldn't you? Uh, yeah. And I am going to stamp inside. I think I'm going to stamp the thank you in the red in the sweet sorbet so give it a clean yes sweet sorbet do you know what this has reminded me now shaz i made a card using these papers back when we had the queen's jubilee i didn't use the green and the red the white and the blue just popped out now i didn't keep the card i sent it to someone I'm pretty sure. I'll see if I can find it. But I'll definitely have had a photo. And it looked like a Jubilee card. It was all red, white and blue with teapots and things on. It was perfect for that. It'd be great for the Jubilee week, uh, for the coronation weekend as well. <laughs> so thank you. There we go. And we don't want to forget our pretty bit in the middle. So I think. What have I got? I've got a strip of this that I've chopped off and I was cutting up my um, squares. That's too small. Let's have a look. How big is this one? That's quite little. Never mind. Let's just chop it in half. I want to use it. Because why not use it all? But I only need it to be 10, don't I? Margaret says, Oh, you had the girls for two weeks and they're coming tomorrow for a couple of days. You had crowns to make this time, not cards. Oh, yeah, crowns. Definitely crowns. So it's quite exciting, isn't it? And we've got another bank holiday to mark that in a, in a week's time. <laughs> Is anybody going to be doing anything to celebrate the coronation? Do tell me. Right, a little bit of glue. Let's make sure I cut it right. Because like these antihistamines I'm on, they're not drowsy ones, but they make me feel drowsy. Uh, not drowsy, but just a bit uh, foggy, foggy headed. Right, just pop that on. Just a little bit. Oh, and the other thing I was going to do for my first card is decorate the envelope. And I will show you how to do that before I finish off. 
other way up. Oh, in fact, that bit should have gone at the top and that should have, bit should have gone at the bottom, but I expect it's stuck by now. Yeah, let's leave it. I don't think your eye is going to bother with it. It's not going to bother your eye. There we go. Pop it in. So effective, isn't it? Okay, so wishing you the happiest of birthdays. So this is the one we made, and I'm going to grab an envelope. Envelope, envelope, and this piece that we've got left. Find one. Okay. So let's grab an envelope. Let's see if I can make it fit. I think I can. I've probably got a bigger piece, but I'm going to use this piece because it's my scrap. So I'm going to make it fit. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to put some glue on my envelope. I'm not going to put it all over because I don't think I've got enough paper to cover the entire envelope, but that'll be what your aim would be if you were to do this. So your aim would be to use a piece of DSP that goes all the way up to the edge, but you know, use all of your scraps. The envelope's only going to end up in the bin, but it's lovely when it comes through the door and it's beautiful. So I don't worry too much if I don't go right to the edge. I'm going to grab a pair of scissors, any ones. I've got a pair of long handled ones. Turn it over and cut to the edge of your envelope flap. Rounding it. Simple, simple as that. And now you have got a matching envelope for your card. A matching envelope flap like that. It would look more effective if I'd done it right to the edge, but it's absolutely fine. And I don't think anybody would care. You could even trim your envelope flap. I don't think it would matter, would it? Would it matter? Would it show the card much? I don't think it would. But I'm going to hand hand give this to a friend this afternoon so she certainly won't mind <laughs> this is what you call envelope surgery there we go there we are she's never going to know <laughs> Never going to know. So make your envelopes match your cards, guys. So this is the card we've made. This is the card that we made next. So depending on what DSP scraps you've got, you can actually do it for any occasion you like. If you did this in lots of like neutrals or blues or something, you could definitely make a masculine card. Um, and I want to show you some of the cards that we've made uh, using this technique. So I used some of the Perfectly Pencil Designer Series paper um, and it's black and white and it's like drawn florals and I coloured it in. One of our new returning colours is Berry, Berry Burst. I forgot the name for a moment. Berry Burst. Um, so I've coloured it in with a Berry Burst Stampin' Write marker and I've used the Berry Burst ink pad just to give it a pop of colour. And I just coloured those in before I stuck it down. And I did the same with the paper inside. So that's one with a perfectly penciled. Uh, we got some brand new paper, which I absolutely adore. Coming in the new catalogue. This new catalogue is uh, gorgeous. And it's going live next week. And it has this beautiful blues paper in it. And it comes in all sorts of designs. And it's called the Country In Designer Series Paper isn't it gorgeous and we used this at class last night and it's got one of our new blues in it it's got boho blue in which i've used for the sentiment so happy birthday it does look great with a berry burst doesn't it so we've got the berry burst we've got boho blue this one is also boho blue with the new um designer series papers and oh, I haven't, that was a nudie inside, it's naked. 
<laughs> That's the uh, the new Countryside Inn. And another brand new paper I made one with. This is the Fresh as a Daisy designer series paper. And these are beautiful. And they've got new yellows in. And this is the new Lemon Lolly, lemon lolly colour here. And I've just popped it with some balmy blue. But we've got Lemon Lolly in it. And we've got all sorts of new colours. Got some of the new in tones in this. Got a copper clay. What else have we got? Pebble Path, Lemon Lolly. We've got loads of different new new in colours in the day, Fresh as a Daisy designer series papers. So there you go. You can have a look at all the ones. Do you think I might have been a bit obsessed with making pinwheel cards? So guys, have a go. They're so much fun. The only problem with them is, is you won't be able to stop making them so i hope you've enjoyed it if you have enjoyed it and you've, you've liked it please give me a thumbs up it really helps my channel get suggested to other people who might be interested in it and that in turn helps me loads thank you also leave me a comment that helps lots too if you're new to my channel please subscribe and um press press the little bell down below for notification of future videos um i really hope you've enjoyed it thank you so much for joining me live it's been amazing and I will be back next Tuesday for Coffee and Cards here on my YouTube channel at 1pm. Any of the new goodies you can get in my online shop at cakebolt.stampinup.net from next week on the 2nd of May onwards. And you can buy all the products that we've already got in there anytime you like. And uh, yeah, test out my customer service. I like to send thank you gifts and cards out to my customers. So Thank you for watching me live. And if you're watching from Tomorrowland, let me know. And I'll see you next week. Thanks, guys. Have a fabulous bank holiday weekend. Bye now. Bye-bye. Oh, thank you, Shaz. Thanks, Helen. Thanks, everybody. See you later. Bye.